What's up guys, it's Mitch here. Welcome to a new video. In today's video, we're gonna be talking about beginner photography camera setups. This video is sponsored by Skillshare. I've been a member of Skillshare for around two years now and it has really helped me to improve my photography, my filmmaking and my web design skills. So when they reached out to sponsor this video, I was really excited. Skillshare is an online learning community that offers thousands of inspiring classes for creatives on topics including illustration, design and most importantly, photography and video creation. Members get unlimited access to thousands of inspiring classes with hands-on projects and feedback from a community of millions. Stay tuned to the end of this video for a special offer for my subscribers from Skillshare. One question I get asked all the time is, can I recommend a beginner camera setup that will take professional looking images, but is also not too out of reach in terms of price? So when it comes to recommending a camera for somebody who's looking to make photography a career and not necessarily just a hobby, it's important to think about not just their needs now, but their needs in the future. So recommending a camera setup that will help you grow as a photographer and also set you up for future up upgrades. So what do I mean by that? For an aspiring professional photographer, I really don't want to recommend something that's too basic that you'll end up growing out of within a year or so. Because that just means spending more money long term. If you grow out of it within a year, then within 12 months you're already looking at buying a new camera. But I also don't want to recommend a camera that's somewhere between three and five thousand dollars because if you end up just losing interest in photography or you find out that it's not for you, you're going to be taking a massive L on your resale value. I knew that I wanted to pick a full frame camera that had modern features that would future proof your photography journey for at least two or three years. And also a camera that can still be part of your bag as a backup camera or a second body after you upgrade. So what would I choose? Well, I actually picked a camera and lens setup and it is full frame. Uh, that is just over a thousand US dollars. In this day and age, I think we're pretty used to spending around that amount of money for the latest tech. Just think of the latest iPhone, for example. And I think if you're really serious about getting into photography, you can actually get a lot of camera for that amount of money. For the camera body, I chose the Canon EOS RP, which is a mirrorless full frame camera. The lens I chose was the infamous Nifty 50, the Canon 50 millimeter 1.8 STM. This lens is an absolute steal given what it can do for just over a hundred US dollars. You do need an adapter to run this lens so I've included the EF to RF adapter in the setup as well. And at the time of recording this video the entire setup comes in at around 1150 US dollars. The EOS RP is currently the cheapest full frame mirrorless camera on the market. Throughout this video I'm going to be showing footage from a shoot that I did with my friend Anna and I actually used the Canon EOS RP and the 50 millimeter 1.8 STM so you guys can get a feel for what kind of images you can expect to get from this camera setup. We're here now on location. I'm with Anna, who's going to be our model today. The location we've chosen today is like a European style precinct here on the Gold Coast. Lots of opportunities to shoot here. It's my first time shooting on this location, so it should be a lot of fun. Let's get into it. Love that. Yep, that's good. Yep, beautiful. like a little bit more front on to me. Yeah, yeah, that's it. Love that, good, beautiful. In general, a full frame sensor is much better in low light than an APS-C or crop sensor, which is the sensor that you would find on most entry level DSLRs and mirrorless cameras. Without getting too technical, full frame sensors are physically larger than APS-C sensors, meaning that they can accommodate for larger photo sites and therefore are more sensitive to light, which means they have a larger ISO range than crop sensor cameras. Back in the day, I used to dream about one day owning a full frame camera and I thought that my APS-C crop sensor 
sensor DSLR was holding me back from becoming a better photographer. I know it was mainly a mental thing, but with full frame cameras being so affordable now, it just makes sense to jump straight into full frame if you're really serious about becoming a professional photographer. The EOS RP has amazing autofocus capabilities and in my opinion it's a big step up over the last generation of DSLRs like the Canon 5D Mark III and the 6D. You can touch the screen and track your subjects with the dual pixel autofocus which is reliable and accurate. The EOS RP has a lot of standard features that you would find in a professional DSLR camera like burst shooting up to 5 frames per second, face and eye tracking autofocus as well as exposure bracketing and obviously raw shooting and you can also even shoot completely press roll which helps you to save space on your SD card. I love the fully articulating touchscreen which makes focusing the camera really easy for beginners. Moving on to the lens, the Nifty 50 is a lens that I've been recommending as a starter kit for quite a few years now. Most cameras when you buy them, they come with a really nasty, cheap zoom lens, like an 18 to 55. The reason that I don't recommend these lenses is that they're usually pretty cheap and not very good in terms of image quality, and they don't let in enough light. Due to their limited maximum aperture, they don't really allow you to blur out the backgrounds in your photos. The 50 millimeter, on the other hand, lets in a ton more light, and it also allows you to get really blurry backgrounds if you set the aperture to 1.8 or f2. This not only looks really cool, but it also allows you to be more selective as a photographer to direct which part you want the viewer to focus on. One drawback of the 50mm is that it doesn't zoom in and out and you have to get used to adjusting the framing with your feet. We call it zooming with your feet, so moving further away when you want to get a wider shot or closer to your subject when you want to get a close-up. But above all, I chose this camera for its ease of use. In my opinion, the button layout and the menu system is really easy to learn, really easy to get used to. I've never found it hard to learn how to use a Canon camera. And I think when they design their cameras, they really have the end user in mind. On top of that, the photos coming straight out of the camera, whether they're JPEGs or RAWs, look amazing. And that's thanks to Canon's color profiles. Most photographers will tell you that Canon's colors are amongst some of the best in the industry. Once you feel more confident behind the camera, the best thing about investing into the RF system is that there are more professional bodies and more professional lenses in this system that you can upgrade to. But what matters most, much more than the equipment that you use, is the knowledge and mastery of the technical side of photography. You could have the best camera in the world, but without the knowledge of how to use it to create really beautiful images, you probably will find it hard to reach your potential in photography. And that's where today's sponsor, Skillshare, comes in. So thanks once again to the sponsor of this video, which is Skillshare. In my opinion, a subscription to Skillshare is the perfect companion to a brand new camera purchase, especially if you're a beginner. One class I really love is by a talented creator called Sin Lagos, where she teaches you how to use color, contrast, and scale to tell stories through your images. I just finished this class and it really challenged me to think differently about my work and to really focus in on the story that I'm trying to tell through my photos. You can find this and many other amazing classes on Skillshare and the best part is that a subscription to Skillshare is less than $10 a month when you choose the annual subscription. I'm also teaming up with Skillshare to give away two free months of Skillshare Premium for the first 1,000 subscribers who joined through the link in the description of this video. So make sure you head down there to take advantage of this amazing offer. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure you leave a like down below. That really helps a lot and subscribe if you're not already. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.